Hi guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. Welcome to another video of ours. A bit of a special one today. Myself and Keen are going to pick our top best five actually performers in the Premier Division thus far. Um, I'll be honest, I had four nailed on, Keen. Four were nailed on. And the fifth one I had to decide between <coughs> probably four or five players that had contenders. It wasn't easy for the fifth one. We might talk about that for in a minute, but uh, give us your number five and then I'll give you my number five. Yeah, uh, <coughs> you asked me to do this a couple of days ago, and I was just tired of it in my head. I haven't even got a roll down, and it hasn't changed. <laughs> my opinion hasn't changed, but that's interesting. I'm going, yeah. I'm going for Foley off Finn Harps. Uh, just think, look, they won't be where they are in the league at this minute of time if it wasn't for him. Mm. Uh, his goals as a part and winner up in the brandy well, and like he's he's absolutely flying. Uh, like, which was surprising. And I think that's why he's in there because, like, <clears throat> he more so surprised me more than anything else, if you get me. Like, yeah. if he expected it, he probably wouldn't have been in it. <laughs> but uh, it's just because he's really, he's really kicked Finn Harps on. He's becoming a real target man for them. And just the way he plays and links up, and obviously the important goals obviously help. But uh, I've gone off a foul there. But like I said, it could have been... Uh, about 20 players. I'm actually glad you picked him because... um, <clears throat> Get the frog out of me, bleed throat. <laughs> I'm glad you picked him because I actually left him out and I felt really guilty about leaving him out. I was kind of kept banging myself in the head. I actually went for Ross Tierney in the end at number five, but Foley was very, 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 very close for me. There was a couple of others. We won't mention them now because we give away stuff, you know, but Foley really was close. I did feel guilty leaving him out. I actually... Probably you mentioned there you weren't expecting Foley to do as well this season, but um, I actually thought um, he might kick on a bit this season, so maybe that's coming into my thinking as well there. But anyway, Ross Tierney for me, number five. Look, Ross Tierney has been sensational. I know the boy's been good too, but Ross Tierney has been in the team all season. Uh, I think he's got four goals, 14 games, something like that. Scored an international goal, which is great for him the other day, by the way, for the under-21s, uh, which is great as well. He's such a good player. He's a beast for the size of him. He can get around the field, off the ball. He's brilliant, but... Um, I like the way he kind of uh, gets beyond the striker, gets into position, seems to be very hard to pick up. He pops up in those areas, gets top-ins, gets headers. Um, he's just he's just going to get better and better. He's a beast of a player, super player. And uh, for me, he just snuck in at number five, just, and I mean only just ahead of Adam Foley. And uh, number four for you. <laughs> number four for me is Dawson DeVoy. Ooh. Uh, he's been, yeah. he's been excellent. Look, it, when, when I'm saying top five, these are the best five for me. and They don't really go by order, to be honest with you, for me in any way. Yeah, they're very uh, tight for me anyway. Yeah, exactly. I think Dawson has been unbelievable when he's got his chance. And I think he, he's he been out of the soil. Obviously, Ross Tierney got in there ahead of him. And Ross played really well, but he bided his time a little bit. Got himself back into the team. Now he's a nailed on starter, not midfield for balls. And I think that's testament to him. Uh, he's doing really well. Some of the stuff, look, he should have been playing for Ireland 20, 21 the other day. Yeah. He missed out and Ross Tierney scores. So, you know, it's it's funny how things work. But I put Dawson in there. I just think he's been really good and he's living up to his early hype, let's say. Yeah. Number four, I've gone for Chris Forrester. Um, a lot of people might say in the last couple of weeks he hasn't been at his best. Well, I don't think he's been terrible by any means the last two weeks. He just hasn't been absolutely brilliant. Um, I think he's been excellent for the most part this season. Um, controlling games, uh, getting pats moving. Um, off the ball work again, fantastic as well. Getting tackles in, good positional play. His vision and his ability to pick out a pass is just effortless, to be honest with you. Uh, a couple of nice goals as well which is always helps, uh, you know what I mean? People don't notice Chris. That's what annoys me a little bit about him. Not him, but people don't notice him unless he's getting a cracking goal. But before he got any goals this season, he was one of the best players, like, you know what I mean? Obviously, his goal against Longford, um, I mean, look, he makes it look easy, like he was taking a penalty or something. Um, look, he's just a fantastic player, and it's great to see him back playing the way he is generally this season. And I'm sure the break will actually do him a little good, a little bit good because he's played nearly every game. I think he only missed maybe 20 minutes of a game when they took him off to give him a rest, basically. Um, I think he could do with it, to be honest, as well. But look, it's great to see players like that um, find themselves again. And um, yeah, Chris Forrester for me, number four. Yeah, 
Number three for you? Number three for me, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's been unbelievable, like you said. I uh, think you hit the nail on the head there, but now he's a, joy, he's a joy to watch. Just watching him week in, week out. I'm blessed to watch him. Like, and I think the league is blessed to have a player of his quality. Look, he knows the last couple of seasons haven't been the best. Uh, this is his year now to really kick on and nail down that spot for Pats because, you know, it's a really tough... Um, it's a really tough position that he's in because people expect it from him. And, you know, this year he's delivering. And no credit to him. But I, I'll tell you now, I'll be honest with you, in my top five, it was a toss-up between Forrester and Tierney. They were the two for me mm. that were... It was literally Forrester or Tierney. Mm. So because you said... Uh, <laughs> Forrest I'm throwing as well. Forrest did get player of the month as well, like yeah. the actual league player of the I month might, as well. I might throw in Tierney just because you said Forrest. Right. But, uh, no, honestly, look, mm. I think Tierney has been unbelievable for Bowers. So, like, what a player he is, breath of fresh air. But, you know, just to see Forrest find himself again and playing with that smile and that swagger about him, look, what a man. And he's, he's in it for me. I don't think anyone would be grudges putting Forrest on the list, to be fair. Uh, number three for me, then, is actually Gary Buckley, so you're overs. I think, uh, you know, Gary, we know Gary from Cork and that he's a midfield player, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe that's the reason as well. Like, he's just so comfortable in that centre-back role. Mahan might have the more potential of the two, if you know what I mean. Like, he could be the one that might have end up having the better career eventually, perhaps. But uh, Buckley's so comfortable there. He's such a good passer of the ball. Um you know, but his, his defensive ability, Keen, I think, has really improved as well. Like, you know, he's getting headers in. He shows great leadership. Yes, he's a quiet lad. You know, it's a weird one. Yeah. Um, But positional play, great partnership with Mahan as well. I'd have to give Mahan a bit of credit there with him as well, obviously. But uh, I just think Buckley has been... Maybe a little... He surprised me a little bit. I know he was good last season as well, but he's even better this season. And... um. You know, so far, he's a big reason why Sligo are where they are, top of the league. And, uh, yeah, Gary Buckley for me at number three. Number two? Number two for me is James Brown of Drottenet. Uh Just what a talent. What an exceptional talent. Uh, anybody that watches Drottenet or watches the league should know about this boy. He, like, honestly, I thought, if, if Anton sums James Brown up, it was the last minute there against Finn Harps, 95th minute or whatever. He get, he picks up the ball mm. and, you know, you lump it out of play, you get rid of it. But he didn't. He went on this run, got the free kick, Dan Massey scores and they come home with three points. Mm. You know, if that was anyone else, it's a 95th minute. He's probably, gone. He's probably knackered. He's banned out. He can't play. And, you know, you get it out and you take a point, which is a great result of Finn Harris. Mm. But he, he just drove on. But just his all around game is just really improving week on week. And mm. he's like, he's so important to drop it. Like, I really think if you take him out of that drop of the team, that they're going to lose 15 to 20 points. Mm. I just think he's that good. Like, yeah. he, he is. Like everyone talks about Gary Deeg and everyone talks about all these players that are out there. James Brown is by far the most important player in that team, from, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I think you take him out of that team, drop there. I'm not going to say they're down there because I just don't think they would be, but you know, they'd be way off where they are now. No, I agree 100%. He's my number two as well, actually. Uh, yeah, I agree. No, 100%. I agree with that. Um, they missed Connor Kane for a couple of weeks. And although I like Connor Kane, he's a good player, at least you can put like James O'Shea, you can do okay in there and that. But yeah, Brown is just, I, I think it's fair to say, he's kind of a different level this season. I mean, he was excellent in the first division. And so he didn't get that note. We're not going to get him as much notes in the first division, but he's brought on that form to the Premier Division and arguably got better and excelled, as you said there as well. Yeah. Just his engine, his energy to get up and down the pitch is rarely cut out defensively. Uh, keeps going till the end, as you say as well. Crossing ability is good. Link up play with the midfield is good. He can come inside. Um, he often does that as well. He can go to the byline, but he can come inside centrally like he did against Harps. I think he did that against Pats as well, actually, didn't he? For one of the goals that he was goal, wasn't that him? Um, yeah, absolutely excellent. What a he did the same thing. Like, I mean, 
team of the week, he must have been in it six or seven times. So you run out of superlatives, you really do, because you, <laughs> what do you say every week? Like yeah. you can't say much more. Like you know, draw the fans and that fans of the league know what he's like as well. And yeah, number two is a uh, fully deserved. I have a feeling we're going to match up at number one, King. Go ahead. Greg Bulger for me. Uh, just by far the best player in the league at this minute in time. I think he's... What, what he gives Sligo is so important. I know you spoke about Gary Buckley and mm. I know you spoke about Matten and all, but mm. like Bulger is just different level. Signing um, the season? Uh, i trying to think now. <laughs> Probably. Possibly. Well, yeah, possibly could be, you know, and the way he's playing, like he's the the legs he has for like a twenty three year old man is unbelievable. Like he's getting up and down the pitch, he's you know, he's reffing games. Anytime you see the anytime you see the ref blowing the whistle, Greg Bulger's beside him, uh telling the ref what he should do. So <laughs> that's a skill in itself though. He's such a leader and you know, you really like I can't speak highly enough for Greg and mm. what he gives you. Uh, just alone, he, he's going to get your points. He's going to win your points. He's going to turn. He's going to turn losses into a draw. You know, he's going to be able to to set up his ship where we can hold on for a win. And just what he does is just I can't even I don't even have a word for it. It's just it's absolutely fantastic what he gives them and just that that leadership skills and the quality he has. He's by far the best player in the league at this minute in time. Yeah, like he's won a league title at every club he's gone to Keane as well. And um, that's something I suppose the Sligo fans can look to and say, well, maybe we have a chance of winning the league this year because he's won the league title everywhere he's went. But uh, yeah, as you say, the bad injury last season there, Shamrock Rovers, and it's always, it's always questionable at that age when you get a bad injury can you come back to your best on that? And that was obviously a question for me when he went to Sligo. If he could, then I thought Sligo would be right up there. And he has, in fairness, and as you said, leadership skills, uh, battling qualities, uh, good on the ball. He's good at nearly every facet of the midfield play, actually. But also, he's improving others around him. Like, he's a great player. Uh, Morhen is going to learn a lot of Craig Bulger for right. a year. There's no doubt about that. So he's going to make him a better player as well. Um, you know, his performances this season have been fantastic. Which one was it? Was it Shamrock Rovers? He was possessed, actually, in that game. Uh, he was unbelievable in the win against Shamrock Rovers at Dallas Stadium as well. So, look, he's... Um, you talked about James Brown, actually, being, um, you know, keeping fit for draw the Bulger, it's vitally keeps fit for Sligo. Because if he got an injury tomorrow, I think any chance Sligo have it win the title, with no disrespect for them, is just gone straight away. Honestly, um, I think Greg is possibly... One of the only players that I know in this league that has played consistently. Mm. Like last year was a nasty injury. Mm. But Greg looks after himself. Mm. He's never out with muscle injuries. He's never out with anything. Like yeah, he just got one of those injuries anyone can literally get. Like it's never a hamstring or a calf. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Greg looks after himself. He's built, he's some athlete, like on what he does. Mm. Uh, Fairness, no, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. Jordan Gibson could be in with a shelf in this top five as well. Oh, he, I considered him. I also considered yeah. Ed McGinty as an example. Yeah. Gary Deegan was in and around that mix. No, as well. I want him. <laughs> There's probably a few others as well. As I said, Adam Foley for me as well was, was around that mix as well. Um, like there's a lot of good performers there this season. You could you could rattle them all off. Let's be honest. Mark Doyle, you couldn't ignore. He's the top scorer in the league as well, Keen. Like you know, that's another one. So just you know what I mean. We're, you know, there's a lot of Sligo players as well. Actually, you know, McCourt has been um, going along his business very quietly. If you like, it's like yeah. he's been good. But I think I think we're like how many are we matching there? I've got Tierney, Forrester, Buckley, Brown, Bulger. You have Bulger, Brown. Forrester so we're matching three out of five so that probably tells a lot you know yeah look I think anyone look people will be looking at this now and they'll be saying look we should have uh, like this player this player this player but I don't think anybody can really disagree with this possibly for me the only one people can disagree with is Tierney over the Roy Mm. Uh, just in terms of that's possibly the only one for me possibly yeah because the only reason I didn't Pick the boy was because he came in kind of later. In my opinion, he should have been in earlier. But by the end of the season, 
the tune might change because if he keeps going and keeps going and keeps going, he's probably in team of the season, like you know that kind of way. Yeah. But um, look, you can't deny what he's done on the pitch when he's been on the pitch, though. So there's no okay. argument there. Yeah, like what he's done in the half the game, Stanton, he's done all his game. Yeah, I think the boy is much much better player. Yeah, but he's look, more influential, maybe. Yeah, and so that's where I've gone from. But mm. now I have to enjoy doing this now. This was a bit of crack. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. Guys, let us know what you think in the comments, by the way. I'm sure people have their own <laughs> list. Go. I just, I just want to just a quick mention to yeah. Lee Power. Just say thanks very much for your... I uh, really appreciate it. <laughs> I wore this today, Keen. I don't know if it's because of the death of it or a new dawn for them. I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We might talk about that actually another day as well. Actually, that's a good one as well. But uh, we might have a, a spiel about that one. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys we'll leave it there like the video subscribe and uh, what else hit your bell notification button uh check out other videos and uh give us your top five i'm sure someone will be moaning in the comments anyway cheers Keith. <laughs> <laughs>